Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. Today, I'm gonna to be washing my vehicle. We're still in the middle of winter here. If you're watching this video, uh, well know that today for me is uh, February 12th. The Super Bowl is just over. What an exciting game. It was played in the last few minutes and Kansas City won. Uh, let me know uh, who was your favorite to win and if you enjoyed the game, drop a comment. Uh, so yeah, as you can hopefully tell, it is quite dirty. Uh, road salts and calcium and grime and dirt. I was on a uh, vacation in Dominican Dominican Republic for 10 days. So we had crazy snowfall before and after I came back. So uh, yeah, it's properly dirty. We're gonna go through the entire steps. Today is a first on my channel because uh, you're gonna follow me in real time uh, thanks to the GoPro strapped on my head. Uh, the, by the way, yeah, just to show you how much snow we had here in Montreal, Canada. Uh, so far, look at this outside. Hopefully you guys can tell. Look on top of the shed over there. Just, it's just been a mess. I hate winter. Uh, anyhow, all right. So let's get started with this. We're gonna jump right into it. We're gonna go through the entire steps in motion. I'm already set up with the equipment. Uh, I have all the products here that I'll be using today. Don't worry, I'll leave the links to all the tools and products in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. Uh, but quickly, we have a foam cannon with the uh, Koshemi Active Foam. This is a pH nine and a half. So just a little bit of kick to remove a bit of that grind. This is gonna be for the uh, pre-wash stage. And we have a one to 10 dilution ratio uh, inside the Griot's Garage um, foam cannon. Uh, for the uh, pre-rinse, we're going to have a rinseless solution here. So uh, in here we have the uh, McKees N914 rinseless wash at the, a 1 to 256 dilution. Uh, for the wheels and tires, we have the Auto Fanatic Professional Wheel Cleaner Mega Concentrate and we're using uh, the IKE Foam Pro 12 battery powered sprayer for that. Uh, in the wheel bucket, I'm gonna have the uh, Phoenix EOD Apex Auto Wash. This is version 2.0. Uh, just a shampoo for added lubrication. Uh, for the paintwork and the rest of the body, we'll have CarPro Reset, my favorite shampoo for ceramic coated cars. Uh, next, uh, at the end, as a drying aid, we're going to be using a mixture that I spoke about on my channel for, uh, well, gloss slickness and uh, also anti-static properties. It's a mix of PNS Beadmaker and PNS Dreammaker. So go check out that video if you want to learn all about it. But I have it in this awesome press all uh, spray bottle for the glass. We have Stoner Invisible Glass. For dressing the tires, we'll have Koshemi uh, Plastar. This is the silicone free version. Uh, the uh, pre rinse is ready to go. It's here inside my Marilex pump sprayer. So I'm going to be talking while I'm doing this. And what we're using the uh, pre rinse for, I have videos on this, is to help to start encapsulate the uh, dirt and grime on the vehicle before you go ahead and pressure rinse this off. Now guys, there are many, many ways that you can wash a vehicle. I just share the way I do things on my channel, obviously. And uh, so yeah, so the pre-rinse is made to encapsulate thanks to the encapsulating technology. It's gonna lift the loose dirt and debris. And when you're gonna rinse the vehicle, in theory, it's gonna have, well, less chances of scratching or marring the paint. And you're not driving all that junk into the paint with the uh, pressure washer, right? So let's give a few more pumps here on the Marilex pump sprayer. Hopefully you guys enjoy this uh, first person perspective, by the way. Of course, always drop a comment in the comment section that shows me what you guys like and I'm getting feedback and all that kind of stuff. So we are doing this pre-rinse, as I said, or a pre-treat if you want, before we actually rinse with the uh, pressure washer. I have videos showing things like, well, do snow foams work? Do uh, pre-treatments work? Do pre-rinses work? All that kind of stuff. So if you wanna dig down to all the theory behind these things, go ahead and uh, check that out. It's very interesting to learn how we do stuff, right? So a nice dose of this. And then we go ahead and use the uh, pressure washer for the actual pre-rinse step. So using a rinseless solution is always a good thing. Uh, I like to do that. Now again, there are many different ways to do things, guys. So of course, first order of business, when you're detailing, always wear protective gear, especially nitrile gloves, 
because you're dealing with chemicals. You want to protect your hands, of course. So I'm going to take, this is my Krenzla 1122 pressure washer uh, with my OG spec Mosmatic gun and wand. I use a 40 degree tip, by the way, when I wash cars. So now we're going to pre-rinse. And by the way, you'll notice I have these uh, detail guards hose guides. That way the hoses don't get stuck under the tires when you're going around the vehicle. So it's super practical. And notice here, you see that flat pool of water, slow to sheet off. You'd think that there's no more protection, uh, no ceramic coating left. Well, of course that is wrong. We're gonna be rejuvenating this thanks to CarPro Reset. It's just a bit of road grime, uh, minerals blocking the pores of the coating from doing its job. So we're gonna restore the hydrophobic properties thanks to a good hand wash. Right, now we're ready for the foam cannon stage. By the way, we're not doing anything too crazy today. Just a uh, standard weekly wash. I like to wash my car twice weekly, typically. Of course, I was on that much needed vacation to get some time off. And so this is just a uh, quick maintenance wash today. It's just to give you an idea of how I like to do things. Uninterrupted, no editing just some raw stuff. So again, uh, Koshemi active foam in here, kind of like a mixture of uh, GSF, their gentle snow foam with a bit of the Green Star APC. So just a, a bit more bite to the uh, pre-wash for the snow foam. We're gonna let that dwell a bit and move on to the hand wash stage. So let's cover this up. So the foam has good clinging power. Gonna let that dwell for a few minutes. I'm working in a controlled environment. So 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit and a 40 to 45% humidity. So perfect environment.
All right, for those of you who are wondering, so in here, basically a one to 10 ratio. So I put uh, two ounces of the snow foam and 20 ounces of water for a total solution of 22 ounces. And uh, so yeah, always read the label for the instructions. While we let that dwell, I can show you a bit uh, how I like to take care of things. So for maintenance, when you're done using your foam cannon, every time empty the container out, we're gonna rinse that container to remove any of the residual chemicals in there especially if you're using things that have a uh, higher ph you don't necessarily want to let that too long in the uh, foam cannon then you put some clear water in there and if you don't want to have any issues with your foam cannon you're going to rinse everything out so i put some clear water in the container reattach it and then run it for roughly 20 to 30 seconds And that way, you're never gonna have clogged up residue just breaking down the internals of your foam cannon. And that way, you're never gonna have any issues. And I never had any issues with my foam cannons because I do this every single time. So maintenance of your items is key. So now, to get to the wheels, this is going to be the fun part. But first, we're gonna wash off the uh, snow foam that is on there. All right, and yes, by the way, I know a lot of you guys find this is awesome. I drive my Porsche in the winter months. Believe it or not, uh, it's the best winter car I've ever owned. Driving dynamics are insane, of course. The uh, 911 Turbo S has all-wheel drive, super safety. Just get some good winter tires like I do, and you are good to go. So now, let's move on with the first thing that I like to wash, and it is the wheels and tires. These are the dirtiest parts of the vehicle. So I like to do that first, because imagine cleaning your body, and then you clean the wheels and you splash that dirtiness on the body you just cleaned. I don't know, everybody has their own techniques, but that's just my preferred way. So we have here the IK Foam Pro 12, but the e-foam version that has a battery pack. Uh, it's already fully charged, ready to go. So basically you have continuous foam thanks to that battery pack. Inside there I have the Auto Fanatic uh, wheel and tire cleaner. So we're gonna spray that. And there you go, you see it powers on when it needs to compress more air. 
So very, very cool. Next we have a bunch of tools here, brushes, a tire brush, detail factory tire brush. We have the microfiber madness and credit brush flat and the easy detail brush to get behind the uh, calipers, these massive 10 spoke calipers. Uh, this is the Obsessed Garage full um, bucket package, by the way. So a wheel bucket and the dual bucket, the rinse and the wash for the body later on. So inside this bucket, I just have a bit of um, Apex Auto Wash from Phoenix EOD, that's their shampoo. Uh, I just like having added lubrication for the uh, mitts and all that stuff. So we're gonna have that in there, scrub the tires thoroughly. I have remnants of CarPro Dark Side tire sealant on the tires. You guys can go check out the update that I had done, I think about a month ago, a two month update. So we're going to be applying a topper today until I thoroughly uh, clean the tires and do them again next time. So now on this wand, what I like is with these quick connects, you can quickly switch to get just the, uh, the gun which is more practical when we're doing the wheels and tires. And that way I can also clean my brushes off. There we go. And now the easy detail brush, as I said, this helps to get behind the big brake calipers. That's one reason I really like that one because these brakes are super massive guys. And then we have the Microfiber Madness and Credit Brush Flat for the rest. Now, thanks to the uh, carbon ceramic discs, this car doesn't generate brake dust, so I never have to worry about iron particles, iron fallout. And oh, man, this was dirty. Look at all that foamy gunk that's coming out. That's awesome. It's so satisfying to wash a vehicle. Let me know if you enjoy these kinds of videos, by the way, if you want me to do one uh, in a first person perspective for the interior. This is the uh, Microfiber Madness in Credit Flare. So it has this thumb if you want to wear it on your hands, but it's basically a mitt that I like to use to wash the wheel faces. This is a gentle, as gentle as it gets, because I have these gloss black wheels, right? So you need to be really careful on what tools you use for that because those types of finishes, it seems like you just breathe on it <laughs> and they start to scratch, right? Am I right? So how did you guys like the Super Bowl, by the way? As I said, I just finished watching the game. Finished, it was like, what, 10, 15, 10, 30-ish at night. What a game, tight all the way down to the last two minutes. And then Kansas City took it home. The biggest sports night. That and probably the, uh, the World Cup for soccer, right? All right, here we go. We're also going to do the inner fender wells here with our brush. Just to do a thorough job. All right, let's rinse this out. All right, the wheels are doing well. So let's move on to the next one. Let's grab our equipment. This, by the way, you guys have seen it in some videos. This is my custom Viper chair with a pan, the organizer logo, and of course the uh, color matching, that green and blue, as you see with my cabinets, my custom cabinets in my garage. So let's grab our e-foam wand. this cool little wand holder there. Perfect. All right. 
tire brush. So let me know. Do you guys like starting with your uh, wheels and tire first as well? Let's have this conversation. It's I like exchanging with you guys. As you guys know also, I'm one of the rare big YouTube channels that responds to YouTube comments every single day, guys. I'm still there. I like being close to my audience. It's how you get to know me, how I get to know you guys. And yeah, I'm just always curious. Share your methods. So also, do you guys uh, pre-treat or pre-rinse? So do you guys kind of do that? So do you pre-treat with a rinseless wash? Do you like to foam your vehicle dry before anything else? Or do you like to rinse first and then foam? There are many, many ways of doing things, guys. So as long as you're using safe washing and drying methods, there's not one single method that is the best one. There's a lot that depends on your experience, what tools, what equipment you have access to, what conditions you work in, what kind of vehicle you're working with, what's the level of dirt on the vehicle. Wow, these back wheels are particularly crusty. That's so satisfying watching all of that gunk and junk come out. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I took that 10 day vacation trip in Dominican Republic. If you guys haven't followed me yet on Instagram, you should. I always add uh, some different content on there. So I had some pictures of the trip. We stayed at the uh, wonderful Secrets Cap Cana in Punta Cana. Uh, it was the first diamond certified hotel resort slash spa in all of Dominican Republic. So the diamond certification comes from the triple A. So obviously it's a five-star hotel. You gotta work hard in life and also play hard and enjoy, right? But yeah, many of you guys uh, that are my viewers also went there. So I thought it was cool that we shared like the same, same place. And I know many of you who have been there also enjoyed it. Food was absolutely amazing. The beach was insane. We had 28 degrees Celsius temperature all week long, maybe one or two spritzes of little quick rain, but nothing major. A lot of wind though. The flags on the beach were either red or yellow. I didn't mind because I had that extra breeze. I don't like like too hot weather. I'm not a guy for that. But uh, yeah, we enjoyed a swim in the Caribbean Sea every single day. So that was cool. Let's rinse this off. Move our things on the other side. So I'm all about efficiency. I love things on rollers. I'm really, really liking these battery powered things now. You guys, hopefully you saw a video I made also on battery powered tools and equipment for detailing. Because the uh, we're already in the future it seems and the things are working quite well. So it really, really helps. This bad boy, you can see a review. The, whoops, gotta lock that in. There we go. So the IK Foam Pro 12, the e-foam version that comes with that battery pack. really like this wheel cleaner from Auto Fanatic works very well. 
as you can tell, I'm also always testing new products, new tools, or different types of products. I like being thorough, getting to know different brands as well. So this video today, it's kind of meant to be like you guys are hanging out with me in my garage and we're just chilling, washing a car and talking about anything and everything. And believe it or not, and I know you guys share this sentiment as well, I find detailing and washing my vehicle so soothing. This really helps keep my mind off things. It helps me to relax. And yeah, hopefully you're enjoying this first person perspective. Hopefully you can see well. Of course, it's not the same uh, high quality as my normal Sony A7S Mark III 4K camera. This is a GoPro Hero 9 Black, by the way, that I'm using right now. So I'm still, yeah, I'm filming in 4K. Hopefully the video quality is decent enough. These action cams are really made to be used outside with daylight. That's when the your picture quality really shines the most. But what I like is that it gives a different perspective of the work that I'm doing right now. Let's rinse that off. Have you guys tried this IK eFoam Pro 12? And by the way, the uh, dilution I used for the um, Auto Fanatic wheel and tire cleaner is the medium dirt. So uh, they recommend to add eight to 10 ounces of this for every gallon of water. So that's the dilution. You can have it in either super dirty wheels, dilution, medium duty, which is what I like to have it at, and light duty work if you live in a gentler environment and the wheels never get super dirty. So you can make a lot of gallons out of that little bottle. So very economical. Phil over at Auto Fanatic is big on uh, health and safety as well. So these are super safe to use. So I like to clean my brushes and tools when I'm done using them. And that way they're ready for the next time. For the majority of stuff, when it's only light duty, you can just rinse them with your pressure washer. And if they're super gringy and dirty, you can use a bit of APC, scrub them out, then rinse them and let them air dry. Yeah, I'm sure you guys are looking at our crazy Canadian winters and a lot of people like me who don't like winter. I live here, I have to live with it, but God, I wish I didn't have to go through that. <laughs> uh, if you live, by the way, in a country with even worse weather, like we were unlucky enough in uh, late January and early February, we had minus 40 Celsius or minus 40 Fahrenheit 
uh, weather here in Montreal. It got super cold actually with the wind chill. I think it dropped down to minus 45. That's insane. So if you live in a country where it's actually worse than that, let me know where and what are the temperatures that you guys reach. It's always comforting when you know that other people are sharing your dislike of winter. And of course, for guys like me who like to drive clean cars, well, it's a pain in the butt having these winter months. But hey, at least typically if I'm not on vacation, I still like to wash my cars twice weekly. So yep, yeah, I'm gonna go out. It's probably gonna get dirty again, but that's the whole pleasure. I just get to enjoy the time, wash it again, keep the majority of that big dirt and filth and grime off. And the more regular maintenance you make, the better the car will be, the longer your protection will last. And it's like anything in life. The more you take care of your things, the better. There's something satisfying about seeing all that dirt and foam run off. <laughs> all right, let's rinse this off. All right, at this point, it's up to you to either foam the vehicle again before the hand wash, but I know my procedures and with everything that I did with the snow foam and the pre-treat, the majority of that loose dirt and debris is off, so I don't need to foam again. I'm just gonna go directly to the bucket wash and in the bucket, I used CarPro Reset, my favorite shampoo for cleaning vehicles. So it's already in there. Uh, 1.35 ounces in your wash bucket as recommended on the label. Just gonna reactivate that foam. Move that hose. And we are going to go to town. Now, microfiber madness and credit mitt. This is a microfiber wash mitt. I love this. So we're gonna dunk that in. We're using the two bucket wash, that's my method. So one with your wash solution, one bucket with the clean rinse solution. We have plenty of suds and lubrication. That's what I like from this shampoo. So hopefully the battery on the GoPro lasts long enough. So bear with me, I might have to do a battery change somewhere during this procedure. So a cool thing I want to remind you guys when you're washing your vehicle with a wash mitt is that you have two sides on your mitt. So every now and then you can flip the mitt and then you have another fresh side to work with. So you're more efficient that way. And my buddy, Ivan LaCroix, who's been in the detailing business for over 40 years now, he has the uh, Detailers Academy YouTube channel to teach professionals how to run and operate their detailing business. And one of the things he really hammers down is the importance of being efficient. And part of that is having your tools with you. So having these rolling buckets on this dolly really, really helps. So it's not too dirty. We're gonna work, of course, from top midsection and then do the bottom at the end. And every now and then you can rinse your, wa your wash mitt off in the rinse bucket. So I like to stop midway on the vehicle. And as I said, keep the bottom part for the end because that's typically the dirtiest parts of the vehicle and you want to avoid scratching or swirling your paintwork. So we're always using safe washing and drying methods. Once again, to try and preserve the paintwork as much as possible. So flip the wash mitt. And after this step, you're going to see that pooling of water or the sheeting here. There was slow to sheet off and no real water beating. Just CarPro Reset alone 
should be more than enough to help restore that. And we can tell, you see here, how it's fighting off the shampoo. So that tells us that the coating is finding its properties back. That's a good thing. So I always have these grit guards in the bottom of my wash buckets. Because all that dirt and debris stays in the bottom. And you're not contaminating the rest of your clean wash solution. So always work clean. Now, again, I like to use the three bucket method. So one bucket for the wheels and two buckets for the paintwork, one with the foamy solution, soapy solution, and one with the rinse solution. But again, there are many ways to do things. Some people like to use the Gary Dean method. So one bucket with many microfiber wash towels in there. Some people like using many wash mitts. Whatever works for you. I've been using this method. It's been tried and true for me for years now. I don't have scratches or swirls on my paint because, well, when you know what you're doing, it's all good. But if you are to have debates with people, don't try and jam your method down their throats. You gotta be civilized, polite, do some exchanges. Maybe there's things you'll learn from other people's methods. So be open to that. By the way, the wiper blades, I always like to clean as well because they tend to accumulate road film, traffic grime and dirt, just like the rest. Flip the mitt here, do my rear wing. I lifted the wing up and the front spoiler up as well so I can have access to the underside right here. So yeah, I like to drive my vehicles all year long. This is my daily driver. For me, as I tell my viewers all the time, cars are meant to be driven and enjoyed. And this is no exception. If you work hard and you purchased your dream car, whatever that dream car is, by the way, it doesn't have to be expensive. Whatever your budget is, if you enjoy it, take care of it, but also make sure that you put some miles in it. Enjoy driving it. Our life on earth is too short, right? So we wanna make sure we enjoy every single minute. There we go. Dunk that back in there. So I'm a little rusty because I was on that vacation trying to get back into it. Believe it or not. Now I also, I don't know if I caught that while being on vacation, but wasn't feeling too well, my girlfriend either. Sore throat, lack of breath, short breath, a bit of fever, headaches, like a Mack truck run over me. So we did some tests and coming back from our trip, we both tested positive for COVID. So that sucks. But we will survive. We're gonna get through this. I'm triple vaccinated. So I'm not too worried about it. You gotta have to learn to live with it at one point. But uh, so yeah, hopefully I'm making sense on camera and you guys can see what I'm doing. So how often do you guys wash your cars? I know my neighbors find me absolutely crazy for doing this twice weekly, but guess who always has the cleanest car on the block, right? <laughs> and I'm sure if you guys are watching my videos, you're probably the ones also on your street or your block with the cleanest vehicle. Am I right? That's what we're all about. The Pandy organizer, viewers and subscribers. That's how we roll. Clean vehicles. Flip the mitt. So it doesn't have to be a super long process, right? To wash your vehicle. It doesn't have to take you hours for a maintenance wash. Typically, if I'm not recording 
and I just follow my regular procedures. For me, it takes me on average roughly 45 minutes. So there's a lot of steps, as you see, that are battery powered. We're gonna use a car dryer at the end to blow the majority of the water off. So that really speeds things off like crazy. This chair. So I do have a heat pump up there, which heats and cools the garage. I also have a supplemental uh, dehumidifier, which helps keep everything perfect humidity control. I shut it off now for the purpose of this video so you guys can actually hear me. So it is getting a bit more humid, but I enjoy having that because I like working in a temperature controlled environment. I don't know, it just makes my cleaning so much more fun. I removed the license plate also so I can get behind it. I like knowing that every portion of the vehicle is as clean as can be, right? The exhaust tips I did not too long ago. And they're quite clean, but just to make sure, I'm still gonna give them a scrub with the wheel mitt. I never use the wash mitt from the paintwork to do the exhaust tips. So get in there. I think you call these poo shoots in the UK. If I watch my friend Joe, the car cleaning guru, I think that's how he calls them. All right. Now for the lower portions. So we're keeping these for last. Because again, the lower parts lower rockers near those door sills. They're the dirtiest parts of the vehicle. So you always want to keep those last. That's for sure. That's one thing I think nobody argues about in the techniques. Do this front bumper. So yeah, you see here, I pulled that lip out depending on the speed the active aerodynamics they deploy, including these flaps open and close, the rear wing raises. So to make sure I get all that stuff clean, I deploy that front lip. When I got the vehicle, I added these clear Euro spec side markers. I think they look so much better compared to the orange that is mandatory on vehicles in North America. It didn't make any sense on this colored vehicle to have the orange ones, I think, the transparent ones. They just look so, so much better. So we're still recording. Hopefully everything is fine. All right. Is everything okay as far as audio and video? Let me know in the comment section. It's always nice to have uh, you guys' feedback. It lets me know that you're enjoying the content. Also gives me ideas for future videos when I hear your recommendations or any questions that you have. There we go. And we can tell here the hydrophobics are starting to be restored. So I like seeing that. That does it for the hand wash. So now we are going to rinse this off. Let's set this aside.
See what I was telling you about restoring the hydrophobic properties? Perfect water beating. We're getting water sheeting. And boom. So there you go. Proper hand wash with a good shampoo. I think I forgot the rear as I'm talking. I'm getting distracted. So let me dump that in. So the lower parts of the rear bumper right here. Let me do that now. It's hard to talk and stay focused, but that's okay. Saw you guys enjoyed my uh, sneaker collection video. So that was cool to share uh, with you. Many were surprised that I meant to sneakers. So Pan is always full of surprises for his viewers, right? So to clean a floor like this, many are wondering, is that epoxy? That's a little more than that. This is called a polyurea uh, coating. So basically there's, they prepare the floor, any cracks are sealed and repaired. They put a primer on top, then they put the uh, colored flakes and they finish that with a polyurea coating. So anti-UV, uh, scratch resistant, impact resistant, uh, 20 year warranty or 25, something like that. Uh, Anti-slip, so you don't slip when you're walking and super easy to maintain. Just a pressure washer. I put that all in the drain and uh, that's it. So I, I actually love using that because it's, I had that in my previous home as well. I have a full video on the installation of that flooring if you guys want to check that out, how the professionals did that. All right, so now, before we use the drying aid, we're gonna blow off the majority of the water using my Eagle blower. Let's first rinse this. 
dry your hands off a bit. It's practical to have a sink like this with hot and cold water in the garage. Let me wear some protective ear gear. Let me see if I'm still fine for recording. We are getting near the end of the recording time, so I'm gonna stop that and grab a fresh battery. All right, guys, so fresh battery installed on the GoPro. So now we are ready. We're gonna wear some protective ear gear or earmuffs and then use the Ego. This is my Ego 650 CFM uh, leaf blower that I use as a car dryer. It has the Apex Air stubby and a blower band protective rubber tip for the, uh, the tip. So it's pretty cool to dry cars. So we're gonna dry the majority of this using the Ego blower and then come back with the uh, finishing touches to add a bit of gloss slickness with that uh, Dream Maker and Bead Maker mix. Also dubbed the Clean Maker uh, by a buddy of mine and now a brother from another mother who knows just a fellow content creator, um, Jamie the Cleaner on YouTube. So he kind of did that dilution and it works super well. And there we go. So in a matter of a few minutes, we were able to blow dry the vehicle off. That gets in like 90% of the water off. So I still had two bars on the battery. So with one charge, I can do a full vehicle and just replace it with a fresh one. Put the other one on its charge. We can drop that here. So yeah, at this point, we remove the majority of the water, but there's always droplets left. What I like about the blow dryers is, as you saw, they get into the nooks and crannies right behind badge emblems uh, in the uh, cracks and crannies of the side markers, the headlights, the gas caps, the mirrors, the door handles. Of course, the wheels dries that off in no time. So it allows you to get into intricate areas where just a drying towel can't necessarily do it. So now, some fun times. We have the mix, the uh, secret mix in here. You're gonna see my video on the secrets revealed for this uh, PNS bead maker and PNS dream maker concoction. So we are going to spray some. This is the Rag Company um, Creature Towel. So uh, I don't know, for this application, it works well. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna lightly mist the areas. So this is good for all the surfaces, by the way, but I'm just gonna be doing the paintwork with this today. So it goes on well, is there a hair on there? One of my girlfriend's hairs, God. When you wash things in the washing machine. I clean my microfiber towels, by the way, after every use. So what I really like about this mix is the gloss that it gives. So normally my environment is not as humid as it is right now because I have my dehumidifier on. So we're gonna see how well this still applies. Seems to go on well, flip the towel to a dry side and just give that a quick buff. Yeah. If it's your first application, you're gonna let it cure a few hours on there. Bead maker needs a few hours to fully cure on the surface. But man, I'm telling you, this gloss and slickness, it's pretty, pretty good. There we go. Already feels extremely slick under the towel. So this is going to boost gloss, boost slickness. While I'm rolling around, let me remove. These are the detail guards, hose guides. As I was saying, prevents the hoses from getting snug or stuck underneath your tires. So using a drying aid or a quick detail spray or however you want to call it, regardless of what your protection is on the vehicle, whether it's a wax, a sealant, a ceramic coating, a graphene coating, it doesn't matter. What this does, boosts the gloss, boosts the protection, maintains everything running in 
tip-top order, but also adds lubrication. If you aren't a towel dry and you don't have a uh, blow dryer or a leaf blower or a car dryer, that really is for 100% touchless drying, by the way. That's why I also love using a blower. So you're never going to touch the paint when you're drying the majority of it. But if you're towel drying, I think a detail spray is a must because it adds lubrication on the surface while you're drying. So it acts as a buffer, if you want, between your towel and the paintwork. So you get added benefits. So yeah, if you're towel drying, always make sure to use a drying aid. There we go. Clean and dry side. Work that in there. And it gives it that finishing touch, once again, where you're, when you're using the drying aid, but it also allows you to pick up any residual droplets or water because you did a thorough job of cleaning your vehicle and you don't want to ruin that with any drippage of that water that's left there, right? So basically it allows you to go over your vehicle with a fine tooth comb, a bit on my towel there, do the gloss black trim. It works super well on that. We're gonna do the glass at the end of the process. I like doing the glass last. And then last, last step will be to put the dressing on the tires because you get your gloves dirty. So you wanna keep that for last at least. That's the way I do things. So as I said, normally if I'm not filming and I'm not talking and I'm just focusing. Oh guys, uh, after I was done with the process, I noticed that the GoPro said it ran out of SD card capacity. So currently I don't really know how far um, I was able to film. So I'm just gonna film this quick clip of at least the end. Um, so right now I don't really know what kind of footage I got. Hopefully you got the majority of it, but we finished by applying the Beadmaker and Dream Maker mix as a drying aid after we blue dried, uh, blow dried the vehicle. We applied Koshemi uh, PSS, Plastar, the silicone free uh, tire dressing. So safe for body shop environments. It gives it that nice sheen that I like. We also did the glass with stoner invisible glass and it looks nice and crispy. The paint is glossy and slick. And what do you guys think? I think it came out pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, again, I'm so sorry about that footage. I'm mad because first time doing this, I didn't know how much capacity or how much time I'd have uh, recording 4K footage with the SD card in the uh, GoPro camera. So what happens when you're a solo operation trying to film these videos. So hopefully you guys still enjoyed. I think you can tell she looks mean and clean, ready for the uh, end of the winter months for me to continue enjoying and driving. All the uh, tools and products used will be linked in the description under the video, guys. So whatever you need, you can check out there. Thanks for being to faithful to the Pandy Organizer YouTube channel. Look at that gloss. Wow. Those hips. Baby got back, right? Let's give that a shot like this. Yeah, looks pretty wicked. So yeah, share the video with family and friends. Anybody who might enjoy detailing and you think they might get the detailing bug like all of us have. And in the meantime, guys, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you on the next one.